were making a collage that would be entitled Endangered Friends. We had four endangered animals we were working with, the West Indian flamingo, the loggerhead turtle, the bohemian hutia, and the rock iguana. So by now, you should have had your drawing of your endangered friend, along with two elements that your endangered friend needs to live. You could have chosen to outline your endangered friend with the marker, or you could choose to outline it with the paper that you're using, collage paper that you're using, like magazine. And yesterday, we went over different ways to create these mediums. We created our wash using the magazine. So can you explain what a wash is when it goes from dark to light? Yeah, so our wash was created by dipping the paintbrush in the paint. And you have to make sure that you have a lot of water on your brush so you don't have to wash off your and wipe off the brush at the edge of the cup. So you dip your brush in the paint. And the more paint you put on it, the darker it's going to be. And you start off, as you start off, it's going to be darker at the top. And then you just keep going. And if you feel as though it's still dark, you could take your paintbrush, put it into more water, wash off some of the color, and it's going to go lighter as you go. So everyone should have their washes. We also covered the glue with the cardboard. And I showed you how to peel the cardboard. And I told you, you could choose to leave your back on, like with this one. Or you could take it off the back because it makes it thinner and easier to work with. And the important thing to do was to apply the white paint first and then whatever your color is that you're using. Because as we can see on this one, this area has the white paint first and then the color. And this area just has paint and the color pops more when the paint, when the white paint is added. Okay, we also worked with our pastels yesterday. where we colored on the paper. And we know that when we color, we go in one direction at a time. As well as we drew different designs. You could do scribbles on your paper. Someone asks for a heart. You could do triangles, circles, different shapes. Or you could splatter paint if that's something that's going on. So I just want to remind you that we talked about analogous colors yesterday, and they are a group of five or more colors that are, well, a group of five colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. So we have our color wheel over here, which has both, which has primary, secondary, and the tertiary colors. So let's say I want to choose Blue, because blue is my favorite color. So I'm just going to count from the left. So you have one, two, three, four, five. And this set would be your analogous colors. Or you could go on the other way. And you could count one, two, three, four, five. And then this would be your set of analogous colors. So you just pick your favorite color that you want to work with. And those would be the colors that you're going to use in your collage. We also covered cutting strips that could be used for feathers. So all you had to do is just cut a straight line. And if you wanted to make it wavy, you could have done that as well. And so I'm going to show you how applying all of that will come together to create your piece. So as you can see up here, I used the newspaper for my leaves. I use
So today you need your drawing of your endangered friend with your elements included. And also make sure that before you begin, you would have mapped out your colors where you want your colors to be because you don't want to have an incident where you have a blue body and then you end up putting your water blue and so that your animal is lost in the background. So make sure you map out. And if you also want to map out which materials you want to use, you can do that as well. We spoke about that yesterday. So we need all of our mediums that we're working with that you would have created. Someone says, what happens when if you don't have a paintbrush? If you don't, then you use your fingers. You have 10 paintbrushes. <laughs> um, so you use your, you're going to need your paintbrushes, give me your fingers, or your actual paintbrush, and you're going to need a scissors. If you don't want to use scissors, you could use your hand and tear the paper. So remember, I also said you could find some, you remember to find some quick, fun, creative mediums to create for your piece. So if you have those, you can take pictures and send it in the um on the in the comment section. But you need all of those today. But most importantly, your mediums, your paper, and your glue. So now let's go over the and your scissors or your hands if you want to tear the paper. That's fine. So we're gonna go over the newspaper. So because newspaper, oh, because newspaper is so thin, you're going to want to be careful when you are applying the glue. So we don't use a lot of glue for newspaper. You could choose to cut your newspaper in different shapes. So remember, I'm not using glue. That's not a part of my analogous set. So I'm just going to make sure that I don't include these blue letters. So I like to cut my shapes into triangles. You could go small, you could go big. Just make sure that you don't, you remember that you don't want to lose your piece, your drawing that you have there. Okay, so with my paintbrush, I'm going to get my glue. I'm going to make sure my paintbrush is dry. Because we don't, remember that newspaper can tear it very easily. And collages take very long. So during this time, you're not going to be able to apply all of the newspaper down. I'm just going to show you some of it. And I apply my glue. So I'm starting at the edge of my paper. So you first you apply glue, then you apply your newspaper and then you apply glue very lightly over it again. And you just keep stacking. When you have a, like a curve like this, you can make sure to be cut your newspaper in a way that it would fit your curve. So instead of doing the triangle right there, I just cut like a, just a curved line and I'm applying some glue. Now, when you, if you have cases like this, well, the newspaper comes off of the page. No. Sorry, one moment, okay. So it's off the page like this, or like, let's see. Okay, so you have this off of the page. You can leave it, let it dry. And then at the end, you turn your page around and you cut off all the access newspaper, the excess newspaper. So I did not outline this image and I don't want it to get lost. So what I could do is take this orange strip
I'm gonna cut it small because it's the half curve. And now this is magazine. Now with magazines, you're gonna need a little bit more glue. And I'm just gonna apply the strip here so that this line becomes, it doesn't get lost, it becomes more noticeable. So you could apply the strip first. All you could do is I did where I put down some of my newspaper and then I put my outline, well, I put my medium down first and then I put the paper down for my outline on top of it. Because that will also help you to keep the outline so that it isn't lost. So we get our curved line again. So what I want you to do right now, we're going to take five minutes so you can practice doing it. You're going to cut your newspaper into the shape that you want and apply it where you want it on your piece if you're using newspaper, whether you're using it for your water, if you're going to use it for a tree, if you're going to use it for your animal's body, your newspaper wash, you can take this time to do so. And I'll have the camera over here at the colors so you can be reminded of the color wheel with the colors that you're going to be using. You still have a boat, maybe four, yeah, four more minutes to go. And while you're working, I'll also work on my leaf. Someone asked, what happens when you don't have paint? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's just one medium that you won't be working with, and that's okay. You don't have to use paint. If you have a pen, you could take your pen, get a white piece of paper, and like your colors, if your color is blue, Paint that, I mean, sorry, draw the pen on the paper. If you draw a design, you could just scribble, you could um, draw diagonal lines, vertical lines, you could make a pattern that you like to cut out for your image. So just get a bit creative. Don't be afraid to think outside the box. You have about two more minutes left. And then we will be moving on to the cardboard.
So should they cut the pieces the same size, different sizes? Okay, so you can cut them if you want to, you can cut them the same size, but, but don't be afraid to cut some really big. Don't be afraid to cut some small. Don't be afraid to tear your paper. Because tearing it gives it a different effect. Because you're going to have like this jaggedy edge. And then on this piece, you'll have this um also like edge that you, it'll look cool once you apply it. A little bit of white on the edge. Yeah, that's fine. I have a little bit of white. I have black on my own. You could have white or black on yours. And then see how it fits better. Um, and then if you look at my piece, right here I had some colored paper and I just tore it as opposed to cutting it. So turn your work, turn the paper gives it a whole different effect. And that's what I love, that's what I love about collages. It allows you to be so creative and do things that normally wouldn't be allowed. Okay, so now we're going to use the cardboard. And I think this time I'll use my cardboard for my water. So if you have a big piece, a big area like me, like this area to fill. What you can do is you could take the big cardboard and leave a big piece to fill it faster. It's a windy day today, guys. Yes, it is. Okay, so remember I said with the cardboard, we have to use a lot more glue because you want it to stick to your paper. The cardboard is thicker than... Yeah, it's way thicker than newspaper and thicker than magazine. So I'm applying a generous amount of glue. And I'm just going to press it down. Okay. So I can see where this piece is lifting up and I want it to stay down. So I'm going to add some more glue. Okay, now this time you, I'm cutting it a bit like a shape. I want to apply it on top of it. Don't be afraid to overlap. And the goal is just to fill up the space, the space that you would have created with that specific medium. Notice these pieces are bigger. So you could take this time okay so I need more glue. Take this time you could get your cardboard and start applying it to your work. And it's okay to paint the glue on top of the work. It looks white now, but it dries clear. 
So it's not going to have this white. The white isn't going to stay there. Same thing over here. So it's 1037 now. We'll move on to the next one at about 1040 to give you some time to work with it. Don't forget you're using your un and analogous colors. Um, for you, that means you're using red, red, orange, orange, some yellow. Yellow, orange, and yellow. But
No, I didn't. <laughs> are, am I back on? Yes, you are. Okay, great.
Okay, guys, so sorry for all the disconnections. Um, so now, like I said before, we're working with our oil pastel paper. We're just cutting out different shapes. The size is up to you, depending on your piece. If it's a small, complicated area, then you're going to cut out smaller shapes. If it's big, you cut out bigger shapes. What could they use if they don't have oil pastels? You could use coloring pens, I'm sorry, crayons and replacement of oil pastels. They're pretty, just about the same thing, pretty much. And um, the important thing with doing collages is just the glue and applying your work. If you make a mistake, that's okay. Like how I, this piece is hanging over a bit and I don't like it. So I'm just gonna lift it up slowly and carefully and cut it off. And I'm just shaping this so that it fits better. And I just want to show you, like I said, it's okay if it comes over on the side because this is wet. I'm going to show you on this side how you can just cut it off. So look at it now. It's hanging off on the side over here. And now I'm just going to turn the paper around. And cut it, cut off the extra paper, and then boom. So I would suggest that when you change mediums, so if you use the oil pastel, it's gonna leave your hands a bit dirty, like it's gonna leave your hands the color which you're working with, and that can make your work messy. So if you work with the oil pastels, I would say take a break, wash your hand when you're ready to go to a different medium or if you even feel like it's too much, take a break, wash your hands so that your paper isn't messy. So you could take this time now, you could work with your oil pastels, um, you could cut out your paper and then we'll go on to the drawings that we did with cutting them out and applying them. But the application process is the same overall, you just applying glue first on the paper and then applying your paper and applying a layer of glue over that. The amount of glue that you use all depends on how thick that paper is or the magazine or the cardboard is that you're using, okay? So I'll work while you're working. We can stop at about 10.54. Don't be afraid to measure your paper before you glue it down. See what you need for your area. Ooh. That's not supposed to be there. So another good thing about working with the glue and the pastel, once you apply this layer of glue over it, in this even this also applies with coloring with crayons. You can feel it, and once you touch it, it's gonna leave the color on your hand. But once you have the layer of glue over it, I can rub my hand over it, and it's not gonna leave a mark anymore because the glue would have 
pretty much sealed up everything. And it gives it kind of like a glossy effect. Okay. So now with our shapes, all, all we would be doing is cutting along the outline of our shape. So this is a circle. So I'd be cutting in a circular motion so that I keep my shape. And you could have, you could create small circles for your eyes. If you want to. I'm just gonna use this large circle on his body. And the reason why I take out a little bit of glue at a time is because I don't wanna take out a lot and it dries up because I don't use it too quickly. So that'll help you save glue. So I'm just gonna apply my circle here. And take notice that it's kind of bleeding onto the paper, which is fine because this whole thing is pretty much gonna get covered up, but it's just something to be aware of. So that if you have like a very light color over here, you don't want the red from this circle to get onto the yellow over here, okay? And I'm just applying some glue over it to seal up everything. And now I'm gonna cut up my heart and add it. I'll cut out this first, so it's easier. Okay. Take my glue, apply it to the paper. I want it to be on my circle a little bit. And if you want to, you could push the heart up a bit to give it a 3D effect, or you could lay it flat. It's pretty much all up to you and what you want to do. So I'm gonna give you some time. And then next we'll be moving on to the splatter. Okay, so if you're going to do the splatter, what I would suggest is splatter as much of the colors that you're using down um, as possible. You wanna try to cover up as much of this as possible. 
So when you cut, you don't really have to whiten the background if you don't want it. If you do, then that's okay. And I'm just gonna color the shade. So I still have my design. It's just different and you can't find this in a magazine. That's just a, it's probably an art magazine. And I'll apply this as my background. I'll go to the edge here. And sometimes it's easier, like how we created all of these. You could just take a moment and cut out all your shapes, all the different sizes you want to work with, so that when you're like in the zone, you don't have to keep stopping the cut. That's also fine. So I'm just going to apply like three strips for you. Eyes to see. Okay. And lastly, I'll show you how I created some of my feathers using the strips, but I'll just give you a bit of time to practice cutting out your paper with your splatter. The splatter would probably look really good on the rock iguana because they have like these little um, rectangles and squares of color. So I'd probably give it a really cute effect, a nice effect. And don't forget if you're using the paper to outline, keep outlining as you go. So I would use, if I'm gonna stick with this specific colored outline, I would cut a little, then strip the length is up to you, but make sure that it's thin and wet. Okay, so my mind said about washing your hands, keeping your hands clean, it would, uh, you would avoid all of this mess. Right there. And I'll still line for my son, a part of my son. And I would continue this all the way on this line.
So another thing, another good thing to do is to move things that you're not using anymore out of your area. Keep your area as clean as possible. And I'm gonna give him a red tail, some red feathers. So I'm cutting some strips and the size of the strips, completely up to you. The smaller you go, the better, but it's more work. They can be as long as you want them to be. And what I'm going to do is get my glue. And I don't know if you've pasted costumes before using the French technique, but it's pretty much just like using the French technique. So you apply a glue and you put down only some of the magazine, just a part of it. And you can use paper as well if you don't have magazine and you leave it, make sure it doesn't go down. Kind of like bend it in the air a little bit. And then I'm gonna just Paste another piece right next to it. And you'll just keep overlapping different pieces. And the more pieces you put on, the thicker it's gonna be. Okay. And then you just lift it up and curl it, bend it inwards. You give it a little bit of a curl. And that's how you get your feathers. Okay, so we went over the newspaper. We know that you use a little bit of glue when you're dealing with newspaper because it can tear easily. We went over using, and as you can see, all the pieces that were white from the glue, they're all dried now. We went over the shapes with the pastels, just simply cutting out your shape. And we also went over cutting out the pastel itself, and now that it's dry, you can see that it's not gonna leave the color, the residue, and using a splatter. So the more splatter you put on the paper, the less white you're gonna see, but you still get the splatter design once you use different colors. If you just use orange, the splatter, you could, if you just wanna use like one color, what you could do is put a lot of paint on your brush, splatter then you would have a dark orange then you add some more water and you would have a lighter orange so that would be a monochromatic splatter where you have lighter shades um sorry lighter like tints and shades of the one color but you still get to see it okay and then we went over creating our feather and tearing the paper and applying it as well. Yeah, so this is like you show it and you could also color on your piece because this is a mixed media. piece, it's a mixed media collage. So if you have some pieces that you 
want to use the pastel to color that's fine over it with a layer of glue um but that's it this is your piece and for homework which you if you feel inspired to do so you can create a rap a little poem or write a paragraph about your animal how you feel you can help your animal to stay safe um and that's it it's been fun working with you guys and i can't wait to see your pieces Bye.